thank you for attending the second of the UCF College of Arts and Humanities Summer Seminars. We hope that this series will prompt you to take further action and interest in research and teaching activity from our faculty. Today, I also hope that you'll be inspired by Dr. Karova's talk to inquire further into Russian language and culture. Remember too that we have more seminars coming up, including one in conjunction with the College of Sciences next week. Um, and in the following weeks, we have the, our Center for Humanities and Digital Research, the Center for Ethics, and CREATE at downtown Orlando, and um, the Center for Humanities and Digital Research. The presentation will be by Connie Lester from the History Department, Jonathan Beaver and Stephen Kubler, the Director and Assistant Director of the Ethics Center, will have their presentation on the activities and the, uh, the content of the Ethics Center's work. And Stella Sung, who works downtown in various communities in the downtown Orlando area, will have a, a very engaging presentation about their educational and outreach work there. We take great care, very great care, to ensure that the presentations for our seminars go smoothly. So we ask that you keep your video off and your microphone on mute for the duration of the presentation. If we find any Zoom bombers, we'll be sure to shut them down so that they don't bother anybody. Um, if you have questions or comments for Dr. Karova, use the chat feature here in Zoom. You'll see it down on the bottom of your screen. If, you are, if you're in full screen, I know you'll see it. If you've, if you've put it down to um, exit full screen and you just have it windowed, you might have to spread it out a little bit, but you'll see the chat function. And um, if you use that chat function, we'll go ahead and field the questions for you. So again, thank you for attending today and we hope that you'll attend the others that we have set for our summer series. You can find the schedule as well as recordings of previous talks at cah.ucf.edu forward slash seminars. And I will get off of here and hit mute and I'll take it away. Good afternoon, dear UCF colleagues, dear students. Uh, dear colleagues from Atlanta, Boston, Detroit, Montana, Canada, UK, and very dear colleagues and partners from Russia. I would like to introduce all of you to our partners from Russia and show you the many projects we are, have been working on over the years. So, Lyceum number seven, Novocherkask, Russia, Larisa Filimoyenko, Larisa, wave, and Larisa Katargina, the principal of the school. Our project called Connecting Classrooms, Finance University under the Government of Russian Federation, Moscow, Evelina Shishkova, our, where are you, Evelina? Um, our project study abroad and Fulbright Group project abroad. Moscow City University, Tatiana Makarova, start of project, Fulbright Group project abroad, and also the Students Research Program and our new partner, Tumen University in Russia. Um, I also would like to introduce to you my right-hand graduate TESOL student who worked with me on preparing this presentation. I have to say that I am blessed to have the brightest students in my program who not only collaborate with me during the undergraduate years, but continuing with teaching careers and became my colleagues. With this, I would like you to meet one of my former students who is working on her PhD now, who was and still is in all my cultural projects, Irina Pitbirezhna. Irina, I'm going to share, to start the presentation and share with you. Oops. Since opening the Russian language program at UCF, we subscribe to the philosophy that you cannot understand a foreign culture unless you speak the language. In 2012, I had the opportunity to re-implement the Russian language program, which was closed in 1999. I created a new syllabus, teaching materials, resources, and developed the whole language program. I am still working and redesigning the program to make it the best in the nation. Let's look at the importance of Russian language for UCF. Russian language is one of the critical languages targeted in the National Language Initiative Program. It considered to be critical together with Arabic and Chinese. 
Russian language is the fifth most spoken language in the world, about 278 million speakers and the largest native language in Europe. About 164 million people speak Russian as their primary language. Russian is also one of the six official languages of the United Nations. Um, what I want to say that um, now let's look at the global perspective and let's talk numbers. Uh, there are 7 billion people in the world. 75% don't speak English. This means that 5.25 billion people in the world do not speak English. There are 320 million people in the United States. 90% of Americans do not speak a second language. There are an estimate 400 million uh, English language learners in China. This is more than the entire population of the United States. Um, we know that um, language is very important. Any language is very important. And um, a disease outbreak in Western Africa, Asia, Latin America, or China can become a global pandemic within days. And we know that. Think about our situation right now and it was Ebola, Zika virus. So what happens when doctors do not understand what a patient is saying? What happens when experts and officials from different countries need to communicate with each other? And what is the benefit for an analyst having the skills to understand the languages and cultural context of these places? Um, one in five American jobs are tied uh, to international trade. 95% of the world's customers are outside the U.S. 33% of U.S. mid and large corps have global operations or serve multilingual clientele. 64% seek, uh, seek employees with multicultural experiences and 93% seek employees who can work effectively with different cultures and countries. Um, every issue requires an understanding of the global and local context and connections and the ability to understand culture and communicate effectively. Taking all these facts into consideration, I am working on increasing a variety of courses which can include collaboration with another departments and colleges. Over a thousand UCF students attended Russian language classes in the past nine years and I am proud to share with you many courses and extracurriculum activities I developed and implemented. You can see on the screen that um, all the beginning, intermediate, advanced Russian classes, study abroad, start talk program, it's a summer intensive program, uh, Russian American Student Association and Russian Tea Hour. Um, here in this video, I'm going to share all these projects that included in my classes. The study of other cultures through their own language stretches the minds of those who make the effort to learn about people and ways of life beyond their own, opening the world to them. In the best language education happening today, the study of another language is synonymous with the study of another culture. The exquisite connections between the culture and uh, that is lived and the language that is spoken can only be realized by those who possess a knowledge of both, states of the national standards for foreign language learning in the 21st century. All these cultural projects that you are going to see and the connections of research and teaching are for students, because of students and with the students. Project Connecting Classrooms. I launched this project in 2011, but it was a preliminary try, and after the first year, I realized this is what my students needed. Since that day, I included the new project in my syllabus, UCF students from the Russian Intermediate class and the Russian students from Lyceum No. 7 in Novocherkask, Rostov and Don in Russia work closely um, with each other in English and in Russian, mainly via email correspondence and Skype on collaborative 
curriculum project which have taken them outside the boundaries of their classrooms and involved them in a discovery process about themselves and the other students with respect to language, culture, and society. My colleagues at the Lyceum number no. seven and I pay our students at the beginning of each year and they start communicating. You see, of students uh, learn Russian and Russian students learn English, which gives them a lot of opportunities to practice not only in conversation, but most importantly, in writing in their target language. Ultimately, the goal of this project is to promote cross-cultural exchange and understanding of Russian and American culture while providing opportunities for English and Russian-speaking students to share and practice their language skills. Each student participates in a discussion with their Russian student partner by email or a messaging application. They use Skype for class conferences to speak with their Russian student partner. Twice during the fall semester, students make a five-seven minute in-class presentation related to their emails and Skype discussions with the Russian partner. This is graded as an oral examination component of the course exam. When preparing the presentation, the students from both countries write a simplified outline as a prompt. They have to use in their presentation as much vocabulary and grammar. Um, they learned as possible. At the end of each month, students write a little essay in the target language and we have a Skype conference where we have discussions on the assigned topics. Usually in the fall semester, we have uh, three Skype conferences and four in the spring. Thank you to Faculty Center for Teaching and Learning, Eric Main and Chris Hested for supporting these conferences and helping me uh, now for nearly almost a decade. Throughout all these years, we have done a lot of interesting projects. The main goal is language and culture through Russian and American eyes. Language, custom and culture are the only things that can unite or separate people. We have so much to give and receive from each other. One of the parts of this nine-year project was the vision of a hero from American and Russian eyes. Within a new millennium, the image of a hero has been changing. An important question that we all ask is this. How do we distinguish real heroes from a phony ones? especially in our confusing modern times. Together, we published a small electronic book, My Hero, where UCF students described in Russian a hero in their life, and Russian did the same, but in English. This project was an eye-opener for all of us. Though we are from different countries and cultures, our values are the same. Most students describe their mothers or close relatives. Some describe political leaders or writers. Another project uh, which gave us a lot of opportunities for discussions and cultural understanding is Youth for Tolerance. This project helps students not only to learn language and to bridge the gap between people separated by differences in cultural background by bringing them closer to the richness and variety of their own culture. Russian students from the same number seven visited UCF four times and they were so impacted by this project. Almost all of them closed, uh, choose careers and specialization connected with English language. My UCF students told me continuously that not only did they find the project meaningful, but that they also made lifelong friends who they are still in correspondence with. These friends helped my students when they were living and working in Russia as Fulbright scholars, researchers, and English teaching assistants. In 2018, Russian students with the English teacher Larisa Filimoyenko and the principal of the school Larisa Katargina participated in the contest on the best international project of the year and took second place in the Russian Federation. The project US-Russia Dialogue Program. The project US-Russia Peer-to-Peer Dialogue Program was sponsored by the US Department of State's grant. It was titled Getting Closer, a cross-cultural US-Russian project focusing on teaching foreign languages to US students and blind visual impaired students in Russia.
since I also teach TESOL and TIFO courses, and my wish was to create something not only for students who are taking Russian classes, but also the students who take TIFO classes. The US Russia grant supports the unique projects centered on Russian American peer to peer collaboration including an exchange of best practices on the topic of mutual interest. The purpose of the program is to foster greater contact, contact between Americans and Russians. The project was based on a model catering on, uh, to the oral, auditory and textual abilities of the Russian students and utilizing the uh, ongoing learning of UCF students in the Russian TIFL program. The project had a team of five teachers from each school and two teams of 10 students comprised of five students from each country collaborating on an electronic bulletin board. The collaborative goal was to create a team model of digital language and culture exchange for blind and visually impaired students learning English as a foreign language, both from the native speaker's perspective and from the perspective of U.S. students at UCF learning Russian language and culture. Collaborating with the Russian students for a year, we came up uh, <clears throat> with the idea to develop a special video game for blind and visually impaired students um, during that time. The team with the leader Irina Petberezhna developed the video game, which is based upon an immersive uh, English as a foreign language strategy and reinforced natural language use while presenting skills in cross-cultural communication. Conceptualization of grammar rules occurs within a country um, studies approach, which covers areas such as history, culture, traditions and customs, and geography in select cities in the eastern United States. Uh, the visual presentation, auditory material and sound effects provide elements of cultural ethnicity in an interactive mode based upon scenario approach. The video game allows users to experience American culture through sightseeing in five cities, New York City, Washington DC, Orlando, St. Augustine and Key West. I would never have done um, this project without my students, without my colleagues Irina Pitberezhna, Dr. Anastasia Solte and Dr. Rudy Magdaniel and Associate Director Eric Main. Visiting the Grot School for the blind and visually impaired students in St. Petersburg, Russia, and presenting this game was the final project step for the team. And now all the students in Russia can use this open source software. The Fulbright Hayes Group Project Abroad program, titled Building Bridges with Language and Culture in Russia, was a grant sponsored by the US Department of Education. Building Bridges with Language and Culture in Russia was a group project abroad on curriculum development for UCF faculty and K-12 teachers in the fields of language, culture, history, and politics. The selected 12 participants were six UCF faculty and K-12 teachers. This is a curriculum development project abroad and is closely linked to an intense study of Russian language, culture, politics, and history which permits the development of revised courses within the area studies program and impacts curriculum offering in the College of Arts and Humanities, aiding to the internalization of the curriculum at UCF and dissemination of the materials to other institutions nationally. The program included a 16 hour pre-departure program learning language during an academic year since September until May, which was difficult for participants, four weeks in country program in Russia, focusing on curriculum development in language, culture, history, politics, science, um, humanities and other disciplines, and a follow-up program lasting eight hours at UCF for participants that included discussions, final project presentation, portfolio teaching and learning modules, lesson plans, and other curriculum development through the project. Studying Russian language, culture, history, and politics, and Russia's global impact help all instructors to increase their linguistic 
and cultural competence and also promote the integration of humanities and international studies across the curriculum. The participants also purchased artifacts when they were in Russia and teaching materials for incorporation into the curriculum development and learning modules produced through in-country experience or workshops, educational and curriculum excursions, social activities and research were incorporated in four weeks curriculum and development projects and prepared for us uh, by Finance University under the government of Russian Federation. The objectives of this project were the following. Develop curriculum projects and teaching and learning modules that demonstrate an understanding and appreciation of the Russian people, their culture, language, and the role of influential people in today's Russian society. Revise and expand modules within history, literature, women's studies, Russian language curriculum, and TESOL. Promote cultural competences, offering an accurate portrayal of the role of community, women in history, culture, language, and politics of Russia. Develop a learning community among participants and the UCF, Finance University under the Government of Russian Federation and Moscow City University faculty in pursuit of a common goal. Provide immersion of the role of women, cultures and language of Russia, focusing on two major historical cities, Moscow and St. Petersburg, as well as the Golden Ring cities, to enrich and internalize the curriculum offered by the participants at their institution across disciplines. Dissemination of the materials developed through group project abroad to K through 12 teachers and university faculty through websites as well as through professional presentation at conferences or at workshops developed by the director, uh, Dr. Ala Kurova and uh, co-director Dr. Maria Santana. Another unique important component of the project was the study abroad student group. The students will partner with the professors in groups and we learn from each other by cooperating on language and research projects and tasks. For example, one student in the group was able to record an interview for Dr. Santana of a woman who survived the blockade of Leningrad as part of the data collected for Dr. Santana's research. Each member of the Fulbright team bring to their courses not only the new material, but enrich our partner universities, Finance University under the government of Russian Federation and Moscow City University with understanding of women's studies. Dr. Santana, Tissol methodology, Dr. Mihai, um, Art and language, Irina Petberezhna, American approach on history and literature, high school teachers. UCF program abroad was hosted by Finance University under the government of Russian Federation and Moscow City University. Finance University uh, created the program that fit for each program participant and educational and curriculum field trips were built on the culture, language and content of all the courses UCF group was working on. Moscow City University combined the program based on the participation of professors and students incorporating Russian literature in everyday session and creating enriching student-centered teaching workshops. Thank you to Dr. Wendy Hubbard. Uh, thank you both faculty and students teams collaborated on the creation of a digital repository in the UCF STARS uh, library site that houses a collection of images and videos captured in the field that are open educational resources for educators to use under the Creative Commons license in course that include Russian language or culture in the curriculum. Study abroad program. Study abroad Russian language and culture in Moscow and St. Petersburg. This is the most exciting and adventurous program. For over nine years, the College of Art and Humanities, the study abroad office have worked together with me to create a study abroad treat every summer in June. 
study abroad program is hosted in the Finance University under the Government of Russian Federation in Moscow. Moscow is Russia's political and economic uh, capital, is home to not only most of the federal government, but also most of Russia's major businesses and the Russian headquarter of international cooperation. The city overflows with NGOs, museums, cultural institutions. All of, the, all of this offers UCF students an extraordinary opportunity to make potential professional contacts, understand Russia's current development trajectory, and to take in as much Russian culture as possible in one location. Moscow is also Europe's largest city and the major regional hub for all of Eurasia. It is a diverse city with cultural infrastructure serving a diverse population. In Moscow, UCF students explore all of this as part of the guided cultural program prepared by Finance University under the government of Russian Federation. The language classes are closely combined with the field trips. UCF students can sample and learn more about the local and regional cuisine while living at Finance University under the government of Russian Federation, a five-day trip to St. Petersburg is also a major program component. As Russia's most liberal city and a hub for education, business, and culture, St. Petersburg is a fascinating environment in which everyone can see the unique and beautiful history and enjoy the white nights. Students tour world-class theaters, see a wide variety of art and architecture, and see the places where both local and world history was made. UCF students can earn free credit hours of Russian language and culture. They have language classes every day and afternoon field trips, which supplement the morning classes. They also have the opportunity to visit the American embassy in Moscow, meet Americans who work there, ask and answer questions, and participate in the event speed dating with American culture when they meet with Russian people who want to know about the United States. UCF students also meet their local peers from Moscow City University to talk about what life on the ground is really like. They make friends with Russian students and spend their free time with them. Moscow City University is also our partner in the undergraduate research program. Students from the Russian classes have the opportunity annually to participate in the students' research virtual conferences and met Moscow City University students online. In fact, during the last three years, many students have chosen to use their study abroad experience as a platform for their undergraduate research. Students document the experience in daily journals during the program and send them to me weekly. They write about topics including daily experiences, cultural shock, and their impression of Russia. Students who are part of connecting classrooms often find opportunities to visit their pen pals in Novacherkask or are able to meet them in Moscow and in St. Petersburg. Over the years, all students reported that the study abroad is one of the most memorial experiences in their lives. Russian Tea Hour. I conduct Russian Tea Hour at UCF for 13 years. The Russian Tea Hour is once a month on the third Friday of each month. You're more than welcome. Russian Tea Hour is a continuation of incorporation of culture to extracurriculum activities for students at UCF. I always cook different Russian traditional desserts. For each Russian tea hour, I choose topic that is connected to the class. Most of the students give me the idea of what to talk about during this hour. They ask a lot of questions about a variety of Russian traditions, musics, 
books, holidays, daily life of Russians, sightseeing, and even language. Introducing students to the Russian traditional dessert makes this Russian tea hour as a fun and favorite activities, activity for all the students. Students not only learn new facts about Russia, but also we get to know each other better in a comfortable, low-stress environment. Food also provides both an immediate sensory connection to another culture and the basis for an informed intellectual discussion. Students enjoy reflecting on and comparing cultural differences and new information they learn about. Russian Culture Night. Russian Culture Night is a fun activity which I conduct um, for my colleagues and mirror the principles of Russian tea hour. I have been doing that uh, for 13 years also, and it's usually once a semester, and I prepare the cultural topic, which would be interesting for my colleagues and uh, will give us the topic for discussion and collaboration in the future. Every culture night I cooked different Russian traditional dinners and give my colleagues not only the taste of traditional food but also the valuable understanding of differences and similarities of American and Russian cultures. I also appreciate the help of Faculty Center for Teaching and Learning um, to Eric Main because we have been doing that together for 13 years. Um, and um, it will be a very great collaboration between language program, Russian language program and faculty center for teaching and learning. The Startalk program. Startalk means start talking. Startalk's mission is to increase the number of US citizens learning and speaking critical need foreign languages. The program offers students K through 16 and teachers of these languages, creative and engaging summer experience that strive to exemplify the best practices in language education, in language teacher development. The Office of the Direct uh, of National Intelligence launched Statoc in 2006. Statoc is a federal grant program funded by the National Security Agency, UCF, Russian program has been having this grant for five years, going on six after the COVID. It is a free 90 instructional hours and is offered to local high school and UCF undergraduate students with a target enrollment of 50 to 60 participants. The participants are divided into four groups of novice low to novice high levels with a latter group providing more in-depth content for returning Statoc participants and those with some knowledge of the Russian language. Statoc program is focused on Russian language and culture understanding in the professional world for future young leaders, which gives students the necessary skills for a successful trip to Russia by providing learner-centered language instruction using topics and situations related to students' professional goals. This theme helps students explore the use of the Russian language in the professional environment, learn about contemporary youth leadership festival forums, and understand the norms that are prevalent in the target languages youth culture today. The last three years, classes were taught in the global UCF building, which gives us the opportunity to organize our classrooms with the atmosphere of authentic cultural environment. We appreciate the help of the Associate Vice President, Natalie Shandaivino, in helping us in creating almost study abroad atmosphere, but inside the university. The Statok team included program director, instructors in Russian, and six teaching assistants who have been in the Statoc program first as students and then teaching assistants. It gives teaching assistants an opportunity to have practice in teaching Russian and develop their leadership skills. Statoc students spend six hours, five days a week, learning Russian in a fun 
and exciting way, singing songs, playing different games, having free Russian lunch with different traditional food. Students not only experience different Russian food every day, but also learn um, which ingredients are used in traditional Russian food and how to cook it. Statok participants take part in different extracurricular activities, including field trips to the Holocaust Museum in St. Petersburg, Florida, Russian American Community Center in Florida, and its counterpart, Russian American Club in St. Petersburg. St. Andrew Orthodox Church in St. Petersburg saw theater play in Russian and were visited by the very famous singer from Russia, Sarda Milano. After the start of program, participants have um, a graduation day where they present their final projects, sing songs, play skits in front of guests, parents, and UCF faculty. They receive the certificate and Russian ambassador's title for promoting the Russian programs for future UCF and high school students. All STATOK students have the opportunity to continue these three weeks during an academic year, participating in Russian American Student Association events and at the Russian American Center of Florida. The resources, the materials for future STATOK language programs all this is developed and shared in the language conferences and publication series. One of them is Picturing Russia, a research guide of Russian culture and language and culture of doing business in Russia, as well as developing new Russian resources. Visit our site and YouTube channels for more content. I think um, that one of the aha moment here is that language and culture can reinforce one another. And teaching culture makes language alive and relevant for our students. Participating in um, all of this project, it gives students positive impact and recognition, which helps them in their future careers. You can see the impact on this slide. For all the students, it's very important and um, it's a positive impact and recognition which helps them in their future career. So you can see on that slide the impact on the students and 63% of these students who took Russian classes at UCF use their knowledge of Russian language and culture in their career. Also, um, combining all of these projects into research and teaching has given me, as a professor, the opportunity to create, develop, and publish. So you can see that on this slide, the impact and results. Um, at the end, I want to say that the quarantine time uh, of COVID-19 has um, given me a chance to create a new approach uh, to teaching vocabulary based on a cooking show. Together with the students, we cooked borscht and crepes. And now let's plan when we meet next time. I would love to present the cooking show and teach all of you how to cook Russian food. But one requirement, you will learn a little bit of Russian with me, at least during this show. Um, my motto is if you talk to people in a language they understand, it goes to their head. If you talk to them to their own language, it goes to their hearts. I hope I touch your hearts and you will learn Russian and language and culture. Thank you for joining us. And here are the questions for you. You have one from Nina Orlovskaya, and I will do my level best to pronounce everybody's name the right way. Uh, how do you see the perspective of future cultural development between the US and Russia? It would be very nice to have more visits from Russia to Orlando and in the opposite direction to develop even stronger cultural ties between two countries. So I, I don't really understand what's the question. How do you see the future cultural development between the US and Russia? That is, do you have other things planned? Are there more of the same things coming up when things are normal again? I, I see. Um, 
<clears throat> definitely I am going to continue this, all this project that you saw in the video. And um, it doesn't matter, we have quarantine time or we do not, um, project connecting classrooms can continue because we have been doing that for almost 10 years already, nine years. So, so and the students, uh, Russian students could not come uh, because of the visa situation lately, but uh, we are still working together. And um, during April and May, uh, I have done several projects with my students um, through the Zoom. So one of the projects we did, um, it was um, US-Russia relationship during the Second World War. And we also have a video and you can introduce um, yourself with this video on our website, uh, Russian American Association. Uh, also, um, about the study abroad, we are working with um, Wendy Howard uh, to create the study abroad without being in Russia. Um, <laughs> it's difficult, but we can work on that in that current situation. And um, I hope um, in a year or two years, we will come back to the normal life and um, we'll continue the visits um, for Russian, you know, to come and share with us um, about their work and still learn Russian and still learn English. Okay. Your second question is from Irina Pivarezhna, whose name I always pronounce improperly, and I apologize. No, you're correct. Oh, I did it right for a change? Yes, you're I'm correct. Amazed. <laughs> okay, well, Irina will be completely impressed, I hope. And Irina was, was one of our star students a few years ago here at UCF, so um, I actually know her pretty well, and I think that uh, a couple people that I've met from Russia as well are on here. So hello, everybody. And now off to the question. Uh, Irina says, thank you, Dr. Karova, for inspiring my career and future as an educator. It is not an exaggeration to say that she changed my life and career. Dr. Karova is what every professional educator should be and so much more. And Irina's question is actually one that's a request for people to ask questions to you, Allah, about to implement cultural, uh, how to implement cultural practices in their fields of expertise. And I do have a couple more. I, I just wanted to read Irina's comment to see, you know, so that people would see that. Um, I appreciate so open. much, Irina. You're open uh, to. I love you. Thank you. And then there's an emailed question, and that is understanding a culture involves learning culture and language, both areas you do well throughout your programs. And the question is how can we help to solidify experiences like the ones you do between Russia? and the U.S. As what can other people do to help you out to be able to do this? Um, I definitely want um, in other colleges, not only uh, our College of Art and Humanities um, help me, but for example, it will be good to collaborate more closely with the School of Business and Engineering. Nina Arlovska, you're from the Engineering Department, so it will be good to have more students, not only from political science and history and languages, but from uh, other colleges. And it will help um, really to, to bring more culture um, to the people who are working in a specialization like medical field or engineering, math, um, business. So that's my dream actually for a long time. Uh, that's why I started to collaborate with Finance University because they can provide us this program uh, when we come or when they come to UCF. Okay. And you have um, another question from Elena Efremova. I hope I got that one right. Efremova, yes. Okay. I'm getting better at this. It's Maybe um, actually University, well. South, University of South Florida, I think. Oh, okay. Well, that's where I got all my degrees, so. Um, maybe one of these days I'll actually pronounce Russian words properly more than just a couple of names. Anyway, thank you for your presentation, she says. How many faculty do you have in the UCF Russian Studies program? 
one, me. And that's a lot of work for just one person. That is definitely a lot of work. And I think it's important to note that, you know, while Allah has all kinds of help to be able to do her um, study abroad programs and Star Talk and so on, and she has funding for it from the government and so on, it was Star Talk, um, an enormous percentage of the work in providing all these experiences to the students and the wonderful food that she cooks is done by Allah pretty much on her own. And, uh, it's Nancy, but I also to want to say thank you to the Dean's office for supporting me and you are helping me every second in my career. And Jose Fernandez. There he is. <laughs> I see you. So I would never done without your support and without support of my department. There you go. And you have quite the program and I'm very impressed with the way you put your presentation together to show the pictures and the activities. And I got to tell everybody who's here, when Ala does her cooking show, you have to tune in to that. Because if you can learn how to make half the things that she makes, it, it's just indescribably delicious. You know, the, the Lucky Charms commercial says they're magically delicious. Well, this is way better than anything like <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> There you go. Do we have any other questions from anyone? I'm looking here on the screen to see. Um, Wendy Howard says, yes, I can't wait for the cooking show. So it's not just Wendy. Um, Bernardo Ramirez says, congratulations, Ella, and thank you for and to all the other faculty and staff at UCF that work with your programs. Looking forward to the cooking show. So now you got to deliver on that. That's for sure, Ella. Are there any plans to expand the Russian program to high schools? That's from Sylvia Gojan, I believe. Yes, is. I am working on that really for a long time. So far, it's difficult, but hopefully I will make it. Okay, and another question, is there a list serve that, they, that people can join to find more information about your programs, everything that you do? Do you have a list serve set up? I don't think so. I think Maybe I do have everything today. on. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, I didn't do that. I think uh, we only have that in the um, uh, in our website, in the department website, all the activities I'm doing. So well, maybe you can put together something or a blog of some kind. Maybe you know, give yourself yeah. a little extra. Work. Ah, you can. You're equal to it, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, but it's a good idea, actually. I didn't think of it. Thank you. I appreciate your um, advice. Okay, let's see. Um, I'm looking, I think there's a, a comment. It says, during this time of economic disruption, are there best practices for focusing on environmentally related efforts like sharing culture through gardens or food? And that's from Sarah Swears, I believe the name. Yes, it's my student. I, hello, Sarah, <laughs> my former student. So, <clears throat> yes. Um, it's a, a very difficult topic because um, for Russian population with whom I work, it's still kind of a new um, theme. Not new really, but difficult theme. And um, we have to work more closely with the people at UCF who is, um, who knows more maybe about that because I am not really myself familiar with that topic. And Sarah knows that. So um, it will be great, Sarah, if you um, will lead that movement at UCF with Russia. There you go, you gave her a job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <it's always> a <clears throat> um, we have gone now about 55, 56 minutes. You have quite a few thank you notes on the side of the screen. And since everything's recorded, I believe the chats are also recorded. Um, remember that this video will be available on the college's website early next week. So you can watch it again. You can see what the comments were and go back through all of all these programs. I wanted to thank everybody for being here and remember that next week there is a seminar similar to this one that's held between Arts and Humanities and the College of Sciences. And in the following weeks, we have the uh, Center for Humanities and Digital Research. We have the um, new Center for Ethics 
as well as Create Downtown. And I noticed that Stella Sung is here and she is the director of Create. So we have quite a bit more coming up from the college in the seminar series. So make sure you check the, the college website and, and register for those too. I'm sure would appreciate it. So thank you thank to you everybody. Me. And thank, uh, you. thank you. Thank you everyone. For putting all this together. Okay. Thank Thanks you. Okay. Bye. Bye.